Okay. As you know, I went to a training this past week on PBIS, which if you didn't already know, it is Positive Behavior Interventions and Support. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we already do in our school and kind of things that we need to do, things, uh, areas that we feel like we're not um, hitting well enough and common areas where we feel like the student behavior can be better. So before we start, I have a picture on the desk for you to look at. And I want you to look at all these little people and kind of talk amongst yourselves and decide which person you feel like you are when it comes to student behavior in the common area talk about it and then we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> um, here, we help each other. That's, what I That's good. We help each other out. Yeah. Um, lifting each other up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Support climbing to the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some days, early. Yeah, just yes. Early. Or just kind of, you know, Socializing, right here. We do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes we're angry. Yes. But we're trying to help those. Yeah. Cut our falling. Yeah. I feel like throughout the day I'm all. All over. All, all over. over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which one did you feel like you are the majority of the time? Well, Emily was pointing out the sun down here, and I like that because it shows she's trying to help give someone else a boost. Support. Yeah, support. That was really eye-opening because I wouldn't have thought that just, like, looking at it. Mm -hmm. And we all laugh, too, because sometimes we're this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or this one. That's when what I feel said. like I we've failed <laughs> yeah. and we're done and we're falling. Yeah. Definitely. Or we have days like today when kids get sick and then you don't have time to focus on the behavior Just in the hallways. And, the problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so when we were in our meeting, we decided that we needed to come up with a, a mission. What is our goal as a team? We came up with a team name that we are the BLTs. So we are the behavior learning team, right? No, behavior leadership team. And um, in that team, we'll just help kind of facilitate ways that we can keep the behavior under control and improve um, that aspect. But there are other aspects as well, like attendance, that we have recently realized that our scores, that um, A through F system that we love, is based off of a lot, like a lot of it is based off of our attendance. And so I'm going to give you guys an attendance report, and you can look at it and kind of see what you think about it. It's for different um, amounts of time. One's for the entire year and one's just for the six weeks. And so based off of that, you can see the percentage of kids that are absent during that period of time and get an idea of how many it really is. Is this since August? This one is, yes, this one's all year. This is wow. Just, this is the six weeks? And this is the number of kids out. Mm -hmm. like so you can really same, see like here, mm -hmm. like yeah. out of the differences. 52, it could be 52 different. It could well, be and it's like right. even looking at my number, it's like I can I like can automatically think of the you kids have a large number who are out consistently. Right. Look at this mm -hmm. for your six weeks. You know, you're the winner. <laughs> You're the winner. Well, and it's like, it's those same students that, you know, like over and over again, like it's the repeaters that yeah. it's not random necessarily, it's the ones And that it's never the kid's fault either. No, right? which is it's always the parents, mm -hmm. whether they're out sick or just out because they have something mm -hmm. else going on. And it's like, what do we do when mom's like mm -hmm. making the phone call, like, yeah. hey, we're going to be late. And knowing that they're going to be late. Yeah. So that's kind of what our team is working on. We're coming up with ideas on how to address that and other problem areas. 
So before we went to the training, we took a survey of, and I don't know if you guys did it, but it was of the problem areas where everyone mm -hmm. thought. And then the even the students completed it to kind of give their insight on um, how they perceived the different areas. Do you want to see that? Yeah. It was kind of interesting, especially to see what our students came up with. Definitely took the cake and went with that. But it's like, how do you, you know, like, what do you do? Do you, you have the do? same kids? Is it the same kids? Yeah. I mean, you like, can do incentives in your classroom, but it's, it's, it's not ultimately it. not the right. kid's fault. Like, they that's can do the all thing. they can to try and get their parents to get them here, but yeah. that's what's not. So, we'll look at third grade comments. And in recess, or at recess, they say it's too loud, they can't hear the whistle, kids don't line up when the whistle is blown, they get hurt because people throw rocks and trees, get tripped when people run to line up, there's this recess because others are talking when going outside, people destroy other things, they don't share the slide and swings, and they vandalize the playground equipment. So is this what students are saying? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wow. When did they do this? This was last week. Okay. And Coach Cutting took a survey and of the, uh, when they came to visit, okay. So it's interesting to see because we struggle with it, but it's kind of nice, or not nice, but it's good data they to know, know that the kids know yeah. and they notice too. And then in the classroom, they say they can't learn because it's too loud, people steal, people are mean to others, disrespectful to teachers, and shout out answers. Now, recess is different. I feel like we do have, um, behaviors and systems that are in place, the problem is not all teachers have the same expectations, mm -hmm. and that's something that we need to talk about. But PBIS isn't focusing solely on recess because we feel like there are other problem areas within the building on a regular basis that we are going to focus on first. And the classroom, I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think about that as far as it being a focus of PBIS? Um, I feel like a lot of it is on the teacher like, mm -hmm. to manage their classroom, and I feel like you can implement things in your classroom, like chants, like what mm -hmm. we have uh, to kind of make it go smoothly. So for me, PBAS, I feel like doesn't, that's not the biggest concern. But I feel like what they're saying, it sounds, you know, like it sounds yeah, like what they would have a problem with or like what might have had a problem with before if we're doing group work mm -hmm. or like whatever. And so I think that's whenever if PBAS was something that we did implement in the classroom, it would need to be like with groups. Like when they're not doing individual stuff. Right. I feel like each teacher also runs their classroom a different way and what works for them. And so implementing PBIS I think is good, but I think at the same time, maybe not starting with the classroom because that would kind of interrupt what the teacher already has that works for them. Right. You know, I think that everybody needs to be on the same page in the bathrooms, hallways, recess, cafeteria, but then I think in the classroom, it's kind of nice to be able to do your thing that works for you and your kids that year. Because well, it yeah, changes every year, too. Mm -hmm. It's not the same. And every teacher process. has a different style, and I feel like when mm -hmm. we decide whose class that student goes to, we try to put them in the classroom where they'll be most successful. So whether that, you know, that teacher is a little bit more strict or one has a more lenient style, either way, you choose students to go in that class based on that. And so if we're all requiring them to do the same thing, then they're not being able to individualize, mm -hmm. I think you said, for their kids. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stay away from that one, but we do have a... Um, little acronym we made that we will put posters in and they're going to replace the Falcon Hallways ones because we felt like what we have is sore for everything but then it says we're going to soar and how can you be safe mm -hmm. in the classroom and then there's this giant description and explanation and what we found from talking to other schools and kind of learning what they're um, what you know what they've implemented for each of the areas is that it's too wordy, the kids don't really know what it is, and they've seen it a couple of times, but aside from that, they don't know. So for the classroom, our acronym, we're gonna say Falcon Soar in the Classroom, and we haven't made any of these yet because we're still trying to get some feedback. Um, and then the acronym is LEARN, listen to directions, enter and exit prepared, always try your best, 
respect others, and no excuses. So we felt, felt like that was something that everyone could implement and post so students can see it all the time, but you can still do your own champs and still do your own type of classroom management style. Does that make sense? Okay. And the next one is hallway, loud, silly noises, I get in trouble when others talk. Which is funny, because most of them are actually talking yeah. <laughs> themselves. Um, so for this one, we decided this was definitely something that we needed to address. Mm -hmm. And we needed an easier way, other than the soar with the big description of how we soar in the hallway, um, something quick and easy for us to repeat to the kids and for us to post around the school. And we've um, started on making neon posters. So it'll be on like white or black posters with neon letters. Mm -hmm. And all PBIS things are going to be in the same format and large and in every hallway and every common area. Because it needs to be something that is spread up across the school. So for the hallway, we have decided that ours are going to be hall. So students will soar in the halls. I think we added an S. Um, so hands at your side, all eyes forward, lips sit, low speed, and stay to the right. So it's just the just the everyday things that you say, face forward, eyes forward, hands by your side, mouth closed, you know, things like that that were constant, but at least maybe they'll see it, and it's not as wordy because we do have so many different ages mm -hmm. that too much word, too many words are just not going to be effective mm -hmm. for everyone. Any thoughts on all that? When will we be putting those in? We've made a calendar of how we're going to implement everything, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the hallway and the bathroom um, this year. Okay. Because those are things that it's just our hall sign, and then we have another bathroom one we're going to do too. And next year we'll implement more. So we're going to do it in stages because we feel like it's a lot, and also it's a lot for the beginning of the year. And that should help with dismissal, right? Yes. So, um, another one is the bathroom. So this is the one we'll be implementing this year. People don't flush, there's talking, cursing, looking under the stalls, inappropriate words, people play around, look at you while you're going to the bathroom, they go on the floor, too much talking, throw toilet paper everywhere, girls going into the boys' bathroom and boys going into the girls' bathroom, and they look through the stalls. Wow. It's like all these things I didn't even know about. I mean, I knew about some of them, but like girls going into boys and boys going into girls. Idea. No idea. So how do we and fix it? And then you on the floor? But I mean, like, is that we have the cameras. And it's like, do they, they know we have cameras. But not in the restrooms. But we can so. see who goes in what restroom. Right? Yeah. Do they know that? Like, have they? I am. Um, I would say the ones that have been talked to, I know a lot of times I'll come out there and go, you know that you're, like, a little device right yeah. there is a camera. Oh. So, I mean, I think... The perpetrators know that every day kids wouldn't yes. have any idea. Yeah. And I think looking at this, I'm assuming what they did in PE was everyone got to vote. Um, and I know that Coach Petting kind of said they're this was copies of a lot of um, repeats, so you could have five people saying that they don't flush, and that's a concern of theirs, so she just condensed it down. Okay. Um, so is this something we so will get to share with our kids, or is this something that... They, um, they did it in PE, and then she had them write, like, okay. why they... So the kids that are saying that it bothers them that people don't flush, they, like, broke down... We do have a plan when this all gets kind of rolled out, yeah. I guess, um, a way to implement it, like to share it with the kids. So mm -hmm. we're going to go to you guys first after we kind of um, hammer out everything else. And then after you guys know what's going on, then we'll have a way that we're going to teach the kids about it. So it won't just show up one day. They'll, they'll know what it is. And then you can have these talks with them. So... Um, Along with the hallway, next six weeks, we'll also implement the bathroom sign, and it's super simple. Instead of having 
again, like our little posters that have all these little words and it's too much. It's go slash wash leaf. And we got that from a lot of other schools that have been doing it. And it sounds super, you know, at first I think we struggled with, well, this isn't academic language. Like, we're not really describing how are you outstanding, how are you accountable for your behavior. But at the end of the day, we have kindergarten all the way to fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And so we need something that's more efficient. And we can explain how they're soaring when we still, we're not taking away our soaring acronym. They're still safe, you know, but we're not... We're not going to make it so wordy this time. So the neon signs will go between the boys and girls restrooms and it'll say, go flush, wash, leave. So that's something you could say when you're standing out there instead yeah. of yelling at them, what are you doing in there? It's go flush, wash, leave. Yeah. You know, it's wash and leave. Let's go. You know, and it can be something that makes it more efficient. And if they hear it in kinder, it's nothing new when they get to fourth grade. And then hopefully that will help it if it's quick, because there's really no way for us to go into the boys' restroom and be like, stop going on the floor. Yeah. You know, we're like, why are you flushing mm -hmm. down the toilet? So, aside from, I mean, we know who's in there, but we don't know who did anything. Right. So this is the best way to kind of get them in and out. Any thoughts on that? Okay. The next one is the biggest one that... I think teachers have struggled with, and they showed it on the survey that we did, is the cafeteria. So it's, this is from the students. It's too loud, people push, people steal food, they're kicking the wheels, teachers have to yell, they, put, they want to put the cups back, and there's pushing in the food line and playing with food. Do you guys know what the cups is? Is that what you guys know? Um, a couple years ago, when we first started PBIS, they started red, um, yellow, and green cups, like solo cups, and they would stay in the middle of the table, and then whenever that particular table was too loud, instead of yelling at them or making the whole cafeteria silent, you would go over and change the green cup to a yellow, and it was their warning. And then if they got quiet and they were doing great for however long, you could go over and change it back to a green. Mm -hmm. If they weren't and they continued to get loud, you would change it to a red, and then they're silent it's on red, just that table. Hmm. The problem we found with that a couple years ago was that they, what I think is loud and what you think is loud might be different. And if we're in there, I'm in there one week and I'm expecting it to be one way, one way and then you're in there next, the con it's not consistent. And then a lot of teachers, it's hard to tell when it's loud in that corner, what table is it? Of the, of the four in the corner, what, which one is it? You know, and so it made it really hard to tell. And then also, we would put a table on silent and forget to take them off or not watch them because we've got, you know, 50 other kids in here. So then they're... And then they talk about it anyways. So the red cap did not do much for long. So it was a great concept and we liked it, but it didn't, it didn't really stick. And so I think the kids like it because they have to play with them, but... From our point of view and from the way that the cafeteria, I mean, what do you think? Like, the, the volume level in the cafeteria, I don't feel like it was, like, exponentially better. No. No, it wasn't. I feel like, too, then the teachers just kind of ignored them, and eventually it was like they weren't even there. They just sat there. Well, and that's something that we talked about, too, we need to do better at is instead of just saying, well, I feel like it was louder, or mm -hmm. I feel like it wasn't, or... You know, it just didn't seem like, you know, we're going to get some real data and use the data that we collect and the surveys and all of that to guide what we do and whether it's working or not. And if it's not, we change it versus just feeling like it's probably working or not. And then that way we have true data to go off of. Mm -hmm. and we'll do the same thing for the attendance. So for the cafeteria, we have quite a few things. In fact, I made some. Here's some restroom signs to show you. So it's go flush, wash, leave. And we have them made better <laughs> that are going to be sent to So that's what will be put up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very simple. And then for the cafeteria, we have made um, 
posters that will go. Do we have those posters? Yeah. We've made posters that will go on the walls so that everyone knows the hand signals. Mm -hmm. Because and then that work that way we're consistent because I know everyone uses water, but this one I hadn't heard of. And this is if they need silverware, ketchup, napkin, whatever. And then that way it's easy to communicate. Um, restroom, we all know that one. Water. And if they want another plate. So those will be posted four or five times around the cafeteria. So then that way we're all using the same system. And it's not coming up and constantly or waving our hands because we don't know what, you know, when we're on the other side trying to deal with the other kids because there are a lot more kids than us. So this makes it easier. Um, so we'll do that. Another uh, acronym we're going to use for the cafeteria is the recipe for success. And it's going to be lunch. So line up quietly, use good manners, nice conversation, clean your area, and hand signals. So it kind of, we, we attempted to cover up, cover the behavior at the table, you know, how do we get teacher's attention, and then also how do we line up. I like these signs because I know like I'm not in the cafeteria every day, right. and so I'm the person where I'm like, just come up here because I don't know what they mean. Mm -hmm. um, so for me to have this up there when I'm down there would be great. And I think for subs and like new students would be a good thing where a they substitute know. would know like, okay, we can tell what the signs are right. to just jump in and make it be as consistent as possible. For and the watch students. dogs, whoever mm -hmm. else is in there. What about the volume level? That's a good what? point. We have we didn't really address anything with the volume okay. level. We struggled with coming up with a way like cups or something that would keep it at a you know a normal yeah. normal speaking voices level one um, because what you think is loud and what I think is loud might be different. Mm -hmm. So that might be something we talk about again, like we take it back to the committee and figure out what we want to do, or we make it clear to teachers that it's up to you to keep the volume level at something that you feel is appropriate, at a level one. Do other schools do anything like in particular? Or? There was actually one school, and they didn't talk about it at PBS, but we've <coughs> seen it, I think, at trainings where they have the stoplight. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. And I don't know what we think about that, but we I think we tried to get um, that for our school a couple of years ago. We just didn't have the, the funds, but that could be something we tried to. And that way we're kind of covering everything. And then the cafeteria lunch acronym will be big in the middle, and we're going to get actual posters made that we can roll out, hang up, and put away. And that way we can bring them out every year, and we're not remaking all because that seemed to be a problem too, is we'd have this wonderful, great stuff, and then it would go away over the summer, be taken down, and nobody ever put it back up. Right. So, hopefully that'll make it easier too. Okay, <coughs> and then, dismissal. Crazy, people jump out of line when name called, teacher letting us out too late, need more teachers in the hall, too crowded, we should line up where we're supposed to. Third and fourth grade talk is bus line, at bus lines. Gives me a headache. Can't hear my name on the walkie. And people push and shut. So what do you think all of these have in common? It's just chaotic. Yeah. Noise. Mm -hmm. It's the noise. Yeah. It's the noise. This I find, I think is funny. Because that's me. Because <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's hard to get everyone to the area. Uh, it is crazy though in the hallway mm -hmm. you know like kids are yelling and like I don't want to yell like mm -hmm. I don't want to have to raise my voice mm -hmm. I would be interested to ask them again about dismissal once we implement the halls yeah. to see if that helps of like how they're supposed to act in the hallway and I know that you know obviously the name calling and the walkie that happens outside but at least to get them to the bus line and walkers and in well, the and, hallway. I and wonder for, if it would help. And for bus line, I mean, there are so many kids that ride the bus, and there's not a lot of teachers that are there to walk with them. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you don't have teachers walking and it's a group of kids that yeah. are friends, I mean, they they are loud. Yeah. That's the what it is. Yeah. They're, gonna, they're ready to go home. They're excited. Kids. Yeah. But, like, what's their motivation? Like, we have all these acronyms and everything, but what's, like, the motivation for them to actually do We've got this some thing. things that we're going to... I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Um, before we get there, our acronym for dismissal is BY. It's just by <laughs> Felicia. Um, <laughs> belongings, your line, and everyone silent. So you've got all of your stuff, you're in your spot, and you're silent. And yeah. silent needs to be in that because that way we're all on the same page. It's mm -hmm. not like the cafeteria where we have to determine, well, mm -hmm. what volume level is appropriate. It's silent. Mm -hmm. And that's a safety thing and a, just an overall efficient thing. I think our dismissal would be cut in half if we could get the kids quiet and moving and you know, yeah. on their way. So, the dismissal, it's funny to me that these are like what they Their feel, concerns. but they are part of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. They're the ones doing it. You know, yeah. like they're the ones doing it. So I think when we show them and be like, not only did you participate mm -hmm. in the survey, but the entire third, yeah. fourth school, I guess. Yeah, every, all the kids did. And the funny thing is, they're all saying very this, similar yes. things. I mean, obviously, you have a problem, the but you're the one causing it. it. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, um, we are going to implement the halls and kind of do, like you said, and hopefully get some data off of that by the end of the year and mm -hmm. see if it worked. If not, we can add, change, borrow ideas, do whatever we've got to do to improve it. And then the um, bathroom one. And were we going to do the classroom one yet? Or next year? Next year. So um, with the SOAR, we'll stay the same. So you're safe, outstanding, accountable, and respectful. And that will stay the same. And so that way our chant stays the same and we're not changing too much of what they have memorized. Because the rest of it they don't know very well, so it's easy to add acronyms and take away some. Um, so what we'll do every morning on the announcements is after we do the Pledge of Allegiance and the announcements, everyone will stay, say the Falcon Code of Honor. So I am safe, I am outstanding, I am accountable, I am respectful. And this is something like the whole school will say while we're doing our announcements. And so it doesn't take much time, but it still kind of implements what we, what our focus is. Does that make sense? Okay. So, back to what you had said. Um, we are going to implement some incentives for the kids, and we are in the process of figuring out what to do for attendance. And um, so, as far as attendance goes, our idea is uh, to do the potato head. I don't know if you heard of the tardy tater. Last year, mm -hmm. right? But instead, so the tardy tater is Mr. Potato Head and you, every day that all of your students are there on time, we would put an eyeball or an arm or something onto your Mr. Potato Head. And then when it got full, you got to have a tardy party. Oh. And celebrate everyone being at school and being on time. That's fun. So the problem with that was I, magnet, I put mine up on the board and the kids, but you get so busy and everything happens so fast in the mornings, a lot of teachers were forgetting and there was no accountability. So it was never, you know, how many parties have you gotten or how many parties have you gotten? So there was no data. There was no way to know, is this helping? And no one was running any attendance reports, so we didn't know. So the goal is to run reports and do Mr. Potato Head but have him in the hallway. So to have a display of our Mr. Potato Heads and have like Mrs. Sanchez Potato and Mrs. Mitchell Potato and have the actual potatoes on the wall with Velcro dots and then the office when they run attendance because they will every day and they give us a phone call if we haven't done it or whatever, they can run a report that will show um, tardies and absences and the teachers that don't have any students that are tardy or absent, they can grab a, pe a potato piece and go and add it to their Mr. Potato Head. Okay. And it can just be right outside of the office, so it doesn't take much of their time, but that way we're kind of all responsible for the yeah. attendance, and then the students can see it when they're walking down for lunch or PE or something, and they can be excited when their tardy tater is getting filled up. Yeah, that's good. 
And then it can be up to you as far as what kind of tardy party you want to have. You want to just do five more minutes of recess and call it your tardy party, something that would encourage them. Um, something that I did want to ask your advice on or your opinion on was today I went to, where did I go, to Hidden Lakes Elementary, and there the principal said that they do not do anything like that because of the sole purpose that attendance is not the children's fault. And so to put the pressure on them that they may not getting, be getting a piece of their Mr. Potato Head because of them, but really it's not them, it's maybe mom or dad not waking up or not, you know, yeah. getting them here on time. So um, that principal, when she was telling us about her attendance, she felt like it was too, it put too much pressure on the kids. What do you think? Um, I feel like here it would kind of give our kids, like, the motivation. I think so, too. To say, hey, mom, dad, <clears throat> like, get out of bed. to get me to school mm -hmm. on time. Because it's not, I feel like it's not necessarily mm -hmm. a matter of they can't. It's just they're not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So pushing the kids to get excited to be to school, right. be at school on time, you know, pushing their parents to get out of bed, pushing their parents to wake up five minutes earlier. Mm -hmm. I think it could be more pushing. And I asked her what, why are the majority of your kids absent? If they're absent, mm -hmm. why? And she's from Hidden Lakes, mm -hmm. and she said because they want to go to Disney World in the middle of the year, so they take a week to go to Disney World. Or they decide they want to go to Christmas on their Christmas vacation a week early, so they have three weeks versus two. Okay. So they leave a week early. Mm -hmm. Or they have a doctor's appointment, and instead of bringing their kid back, they're just gone all day. They miss the entire day. And so she used those reasons, and instead of them motivating the students, they went the approach of motivating the parents, which I thought was really cool, and I think we can still do both of them. So what she's doing is they, they send out an attendance 101 thing, and it's a pamphlet, and it gives all the nuts and bolts of attendance, because I, parents don't realize mm -hmm. the, you know, the backlash on school ratings, but it's also illegal, you know, and what could happen if you don't bring your kid to school, and they don't realize how many days and how many tardies and... Yeah, that's what it is. Or how many right. tardies make an absence. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. They don't know, and I mean, we can't blame them. No one educates them on it. So I think maybe that could be something we do also. We send out an attendance 101, and we can talk to administration about that and figure out a way to inform parents because that's half the battle. Mm -hmm. And then we can also have kids that can say, Mom, get up, versus they're not going to Disney World, but their parents are just tired because they've been working all night and haven't gotten up to take them to school. And then they might be more motivated. So we could do I encourage them to schedule their appointments in the afternoon so they can be here until about 10 o'clock, though, and then go. Not miss the whole day because mm -hmm. you have a 30 mm -hmm. minute mm -hmm. doctor's appointment at 2 o'clock. Well, and even they <laughs> right. said it takes like a village because their office staff really watches it too. So if a kid has to leave, they'll have them sit for five more minutes until 9.45, mark them there, and then say, okay, go to your doctor's appointment, and then oh. they come back. So I know it's kind of a way of working the system, mm -hmm. but you know when so much is put on attendance and it is so important. But so, and um, that is the at attendance goal and kind of the idea, and we're hoping to start that now, since we have st already started a push towards attendance with the bells and the reminders that we could start that this year also, and that because that wouldn't take much from us. In fact, mm -hmm. it wouldn't take anything. Just right. Um, but we are going to keep the golden eggs, so we're still going to have them kind of whole group work towards that incentive of walking in the hallway and being, you know, leaders as a whole. And then um, they'll still get the golden eggs, and every six weeks, the class with the most will get to carry around the golden egg and be proud of it. And then that way we're not taking away something that they love, because yeah. they do love it. As much as it kind of fades in and out, mm -hmm. they get it. They do get excited. Mm -hmm. And that can be something we can figure out how do we make it not fade. So that can be a conversation too. Um, the next thing we're going to do, so right now we have the Soaring Falcon and the Top Falcon. I think that's how I'm there. The Top Falcon is the one that we choose 
and they get a certificate and they get, that's it. They get a certificate. Right. And um, then the Soaring Falcon is the one we choose, the SOAR card, and then they get to go to that little party after school. And as a committee, we felt like that was a little bit backwards. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm going to choose a kid versus draw one out of a hat, I would rather the one that I've chosen that's been, you know, soaring all the time, that whole six weeks, and set a good example for the class, get the reward. Right. And we just felt like it was too much. So we are going to take away the sword cards completely and do just top falcons, where you choose your top falcon, they get a certificate, they get recognized at the sword celebration, and they get to go to the falcon festivity. Because that's a hit, and we didn't want to take that away too. So that's the only thing as far as us, when we choose a kid, it will just be one. You'll still write a sentence about them. And um, and to replace the SOAR cards um, as far as individual incentives. So we've got our whole group, which is the golden eggs. We've got the attendance. And then we've got the one that we choose. But as far as individual incentives, so like what you said, how do we keep them quiet in the hallway? What do we do to motivate them? Because as much as, um, what did they say? In our training, they talked about bribes. Yeah. And how it's not really a bribe. If, because they gave us the definition of a bribe, and the definition of a bribe is um, paying someone or giving someone something in return for them doing something they shouldn't be doing, or in return for them doing something illegal. Okay. And we're not doing that. We're rewarding them for making good choices and their good behavior. So it's not a bribe, because a lot of, that's what they said that is the kind of the biggest pushback with PBIS is, why am I bribing them when they should act like this anyways? Yeah. But it's not a bribe, it's an incentive, and they are kids. Right. So. Um, so with the falcon feathers, they will be actual feathers that we're going to get printed. Oh, cool. um, not like yeah. real fuzzy feathers, but yeah. that will get printed. We won't write on them like we've done in the past because that's a waste of paper. And we, as teachers, don't have time to write on them. And a lot of our store cards that were coming back, nobody was writing on them anyways. So it was kind of pointless. Mm -hmm. And that way we can reuse all the feathers. So what you'll do is each teacher will get a baggie of 50 feathers. And we'll give you your baggie, and your goal is to give them out to any student, your kids, fourth grade, first grade, whatever. Um, so same thing as the sword cards. And those kids will collect their, fe their feathers. And when you run out of feathers to pass out, you go to the office, and you give them your empty baggie, and they give you 50 more feathers. But when you bring your empty baggie, your name as a teacher gets put into a drawing for a gift card. Mm -hmm. oh. And so then we have some teacher incentive too because that's half the battle is the buy-in yeah. of the teachers and it, that staying you know, relevant for us because we do have so much going on. Um, and then what the kids will do with the feathers is we have pockets that we're going to post by the door, like little pockets you slide things in, and we're going to provide them for the teachers and they're going to all be numbered. And so say number four, your student number four, would got a feather and they go put it in the number four slot. And then they collect their feathers. And um, the reason we chose to do this is because on our committee we have kindergarten, first, second, all of those uh, represented there, all those teachers represented there, and they all felt like it's really hard for a kindergartner to keep track of these feathers. Or it's really hard for a first grader to not steal another first grader's mm -hmm. feathers. And then this way we've got these little pockets and they can... Um, open and put it in and close it and then no one is in and out of each other's feathers and the teacher can watch it. And then um, every six weeks or so, four weeks maybe, we're still working on that, um, we would announce that today is the feather trade-in day and during your time, which will make a schedule or a specific time, maybe recess, mm -hmm. where you'll send your kids that have or you'll take your kids that have at least 10 or 15 feathers and they'll bring them to the office. And in the office will be a treasure box and be simple things like a selfie with the principal or a pencil or nothing that is like lunch with the teacher, nothing that you have to do. It's not gonna be extra recess, it's not gonna be anything that you have to do. The only thing with everything that we're implementing that you have to do is the tardy party, which we feel like is, you know, not unreasonable. Yeah. So with the treasure box, we would have things in there, and we would choose um, how much it is that they have to trade in, and that would make it a reward. 
and everyone gets a reward for their good behavior versus if they get enough versus just the one person that we draw out of the bag. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. It's like equal for everyone because mm -hmm. you never know who's going to hit it anywhere who's going to notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we did teacher incentives to get that teacher buy-in too, because it's really the only piece that teachers are really involved in. Mm -hmm. Like it? Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts? No, it sounds good. Okay. I think it'll so, push teachers a lot. Okay, so to kind of wrap it up, it'll. I'm sorry. What? I think it'll push teachers. You think? To really give kids that others. Well, do. it's mm -hmm. kind of like the elf thing that we did at Christmas. Yes. I mean, teachers were running all over looking yeah. for the elf because they wanted their gift card or whatever the prize was. And so if we can do that and you just take a baggie and they give you more yeah. and all you have to do is stop through the office mm -hmm. to get it, okay. that's not too much work on you. You don't have to write your name on a million of them. Yeah. All you have to do is pass them out. And you can have them at dismissal and you can have them everywhere. Mm -hmm. Well, and I remember when we first did this sort tickets or whatever, when we would hand them in the hallways, I mean, it was night and day. Like... It's just keeping that going, mm -hmm. rather than like mm -hmm. doing away with it or getting laps on it. So if the teachers are buying it, mm -hmm. really participating, I think it'll be good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the feathers was based off of the Ridgeview Bucks, I think is what they mm -hmm. call them, yeah. and we kind of debated doing bucks, like doing money, real money, not real money, but fake money um but we struggled with how do we do money when half of the school is doing a classroom economy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then the money will mix and then if we don't do money that really looks like money maybe we make it blue with a falcon in the middle well then it doesn't really look like money and we're teaching kindergartners that dollar bills are blue that have and have a bird on them you know what i mean it's not really if we're going to do money, we, it, sh it should look like money yeah. to teach them that. Yeah. But if we're not going to do money, we need to do something completely different, like right. a feather or whatever, an egg. Yeah. Like okay, so to kind of wrap it all up, there's an article on your table, if you could read it, or it's a story. You can read that quietly to yourself, and we're going to talk about it. What do you think? I think it's showing that a lot of times, like teachers will try and try and try and not really like step out of the box and look at it a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, and like for this person that left, and people were kind of negative, going, "Why are they leaving? Or what are they doing?" That they went to go try a different way and found what was happening, what was making that problem occur. I think sometimes it's harder to find the real root of the problem mm -hmm. to fix things. You know, you kind of just want to put a band-aid on things yeah. instead of going above and beyond and finding the real root and starting at the bottom and working your way up, even if it means it's going to take longer to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like that. That's mm -hmm. good. And I think that's kind of our goal versus <coughs> reacting to mm -hmm. the noise level in the cafeteria and yelling and screaming mm -hmm. or the hallway and yelling in the hall and making them all freeze and get in their line and having to battle that every day we're being more proactive and trying to catch it before it happens so okay well when PBIS meets again we'll talk about kind of what we all discuss and come up with posters and videos and ways to kind of implement it with the kids and start it this next six weeks the two things Good. That sounds good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.